Okay, um, let's get started. Um, again, my name is Eris Katz. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder of Lucena Research. Um, my background is I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, this is uh, an exciting business that I've uh, engaged along with uh, Professor Tucker Bulch, my partner in CTO. Um, um, I, my expertise lies on the technology side. I understand how to build and, uh, and evolve technology-based businesses. Uh, previous to uh, Lucena, I was the CEO and founder of uh, a company called Objectware that was sold in 2007 to uh, Richline Digital. The market is a volatile environment. It's difficult to predict, and everybody we talk to, whether they are professional investors or uh, individual retail investors, they have uh, their own strategies and they think that um, they will work one way or another. But how can one truly test and validate a trading strategy before they risk capital? And the back tester is really meant to provide the means um, of doing exactly that. So if you look at the Investopedia and, and how we define back tester, it is the process of testing a trading strategy on prior time periods. And instead of applying a strategy to the future, uh, looking forward, that can take years and that's very not very practical. A trader can run a simulation of his or her trading strategy on the relevant past data in order to gauge its effectiveness. Now, just to underscore, the forward testing is really the best way to analyze quality of a strategy because there's no uh, historical knowledge that comes into effect other than just uh, you know knowing how it performed in the past but in practicality if you do a forward testing you have to wait until your testing is complete and nobody really has time to wait two years to realize whether two years ago the strategy would have was effective because obviously things have changed could have changed and nobody has the time to to wait that long to execute on trades so uh, Truly, uh, back testing with the proper simulations and the proper measures would be the best and the most effective way to realize the benefit of a strategy. So, if you think about um, the back testing in simulation, uh, how do you really? Um, what is the ingredients that that compose a effective back testing and simulation? So, you roll back to an earlier point in time and you present the current information to the strategy without peeking into the future. So you basically say, if I had lived at that, kind of, at that point in time in the past, uh, and I've invested in one way or another, without knowing what the future holds, how would my projections actually turn out to be now that I know what the history had eventually uh, provided or, or become? So you ask the strategy, what would you do? You accept order to simulate their trade executions. You track your portfolio uh, value, and then you step forward and repeat the same process many, many times over in order to give you some sort of a uh, realization of a strategy over time versus a one-time uh, lucky success or failure. And then at the end, you report on the overall portfolio's performance and compare it to various benchmarks such as S&P 500 or the Dow Jones or any other index you wish to, to compare or even other uh, portfolios you know what their performance was. But essentially, this is what you try to do. You try to say, if I had lived in the past and I applied these rules for my trades, how did I actually end up compared to what my strategy was telling me uh, to do and how effective uh, my technique was compared to the benchmark? So there are so many risks, obviously. There are many risks and many, uh, you know, I would say deficiencies in a back testing. 
first of all, um, as you know, the market is different in one period of time than it was in the past. The psyche of the investment um, population may have changed. Uh, so an example, you know, if you want to test a strategy based on the notion of uh, internet IPOs that in the past, have, you know, during the dot, dot com boom, they outperformed the overall market by a long shot. Uh, and that was a really great strategy to test and apply in the late 90s. Um, today, uh, it would not have actually performed as well. As a matter of fact, you probably uh, would have received um, a, a dismal uh, set of results. Um, and you always uh, obviously hear that past performance does not necessarily guarantee future returns. And it really applies uh, fairly well with a backtest strategy. So how do you ensure that you test things and you compare them as apples to apples to make sure that historically the data that you're presenting is very much relevant to what it is today? Uh, one of the biggest challenge that um, you, you come across is that you have a strategy that worked really well, get some great results, and you think you really nailed it and you had something really special. But there is uh, the notion of did you stumble upon something just by sheer luck? Uh, it's called overfitting. And overfitting is an important notion that you have to be aware of when you test historically a strategy, which basically you, you play with different knobs and buttons and you measure different parameters to a point where it becomes really, really productive historically and it shows a fantastic set of results. And there are ways to ensure that you did not stumble upon something completely by accident by ensuring that overfitting is out of the, taken out of the equation to the best possible. For example, if your strategy said that I'm going to trade one way or another every Tuesday of every other week, I'll buy these equities and I sell these equities and this is my entry and exit criteria, and you came up with some great results, why won't you change the strategy to do it on Wednesday versus Tuesday and see if you get similar results? So you try to change some of the parameters that may not be as relevant to the strategy itself and see if the results kind of uh, are sustainable. And if they are, you may not be as overfitting as, as you may think. So that's one way of uh, getting the noise and the randomness um, out, of the, um, out of the results of the, of the back tester. So here are the main components that when we try to implement the back tester, uh, we take it into consideration. So historical data feed. So basically you want to feed data that is um, accurately reflective of uh, what transpired in the past. Uh, the data has to be, um, of course, price history of, uh, of equities data, but also the whole market tech conditions. For example, think about historical data from uh, survive, survivor bias free, which is basically equities that no longer exist today uh, should still be considered historically because at the time they were actively traded. So if a company had uh, closed out or had uh, potentially uh, merged with another company or even went bankrupt and, and become de became delisted from the major exchanges, you have to treat them as if they were actually active at the time because that's part of the equation. And um, your data has to be survivor bias-free data. Of course, you have to generate the actual strategy. And that's the biggest challenge for technologists. How do you communicate effectively um, your back to strategy to the system that encompasses everything you think about without making a very complicated data entry exercise? Because you have to think about how do you enter? How do you exit? What are your criteria for selection? Of, of equities, uh, how do you trade, what is the cost of the transactions, and many, many other aspects of how you define a trading strategy. And it's not easy to explain verbally, just think about how do you do that programmatically in, in the system. So with Lucena, what we have done, have taken uh, an approach of truly backtesting our tool set, our machine learning tool sets, specifically to show our customers or our uh, prospects, what are the specific qualities of each tool by itself, and we understand that we cannot really, um, you know, um, examine every potential strategy in the world. And then of course you have the market simulations. How do you execute orders, and how do you execute the orders in a way that are realistic? I'll give you an example. If you look at 
orders that um, are executed at the open price of, uh, of, of the exchange. So look at Apple, for instance, and opens up at $430 a share. And your simulation will say, okay, I want to buy that at the open. There is no guarantee that that price will be executed at, at your order will be executed at that price because maybe at the open somebody has had a very large block of orders before you and the, the price jumped up or down and uh, you may not have um, that type of uh, you know accuracy in your assessment that you will execute it at that price. So we have to put measures on uh, how liquid the stock was at the time of, uh, of the order as well as uh, what is the market impact? How how uh, can you account for these uh, potential losses on the in or the outs, the buys or the sales? Because you may not be guaranteed to execute at the price that you are simulating the execution. And uh, of course, the analysis engine. How do you assess the qualitative and the quantitative measures of the results of your of your back test? And we have. Uh, quite a few uh, points of measure, anything from comparison with benchmarks, which I mentioned before, to uh, um, beta, to uh, volatility, to drawdown, to sharp ratio, sortino ratio, and many other qualities that can give you uh, a good analysis of how, how strong the strategy. Sometimes total return may not be the only thing you look for. And many folks that are actually been in the business for a long time looking for uh, volatility reduction and more predictability in their portfolios as opposed to trying to kill uh, the market every single time. So again, it depends on your strategy. How do you measure that success against, uh, against the benchmark? So what do you want to look for in a back tester? Obviously, historical data. We mentioned survivor bias free and accurate data, um, broad data, satisfy and satisfy your investment strategy. The ease of use of defining um, the strategy to test against. And of course, the simulation, accurate simulation of transactions, costs, including commission, market impact, uh, short borrowing costs. When you short a trans an, an equity, you may not be able to short it altogether if it's a very thinly traded stock, or you have a borrowing cost associated with that, that short. How do you account for that? Uh, of course, uh, analysis engine, com complete the uh, coverage of important metrics, including comparison with benchmark, I mentioned that before. The transparency, that's really important. You know, how do you provide to your, to your audience or to yourself the ability to go and audit trail what the simulation has done for you? Can you look at all the transactions for every rebalancing period? There could be hundreds of, or, or many, many, many transactions. How do you go back and validate that these actually have taken place at the right time, at the right price, and that the results are really backed by the detailed data for validation? And of course, the overfitting. How do you um, um, manage to uh, try different things uh, with multiple parameters by expanding the, um, I guess, uh, one of the things about overfitting, for example, is that if you have very small adjustments in the parameters, for example, you want to uh, shift a parameter by a small tick here and there, that can really get you in trouble with overfitting. Um, you want to have as broad as possible parameters uh, when you do the transactions to to not allow the system to find and fine tune up to the minute the most minute detail what is the best approach because again it's very hard to replicate when you try to always execute um, the equity uh, at the top uh, or the bottom price of the day uh, and and these are again the accuracies that a machine a computer can do for you but in reality it never actually works that way, so you have to account for that. Before I get into the demo, um, I'd like to uh, talk about just Quandesk. Like I mentioned before, you know, we tried to apply our back tester to really test our three core products: uh, the price forecaster, the portfolio optimizer, and and the hedge finder. Uh, for both, those of you who have not seen any of our demos before, I'm going to just mention quickly uh, what these three products do and then talk about how the price, how the back tester test them out and how, how they can really realize the benefit um, of, of these tools specifically. Uh, price forecaster is uh, essentially uh, a price direction and a price forecast and confidence measure prediction. It takes a quantitative analysis of fundamental, technical, and proprietary data, look historically at patterns 
of behavior that are similar to what the equity that you're trying to test uh, is uh, looking like today. And then it provides a forward-looking price prediction in direction and confidence measure. Uh, portfolio optimizer uh, takes existing portfolio, use a mean variance optimization um, to allocate the most effectively the cash holding among your equity positions. Uh, it does uh, take into account uh, the price forecaster uh, predictions if you choose to use a machine learning predictor into the optimizer to identify where you think the equities are going to, uh, towards as far as price and direction and that's how the optimizer base, bases uh, its uh, decision based on. Uh, it has other parameters to, to choose uh, price forecasts from other means as well such as your user sentiment or historical averages but uh, our, our unique uh, flavor here is that the price forecaster feeds into the optimizer where these equities are heading. The third one is uh, the hedger. Hedger uh, as opposed to the optimizer provide a mean to um, um, increase your sharp ratio or reduce volatility uh, by introducing additional equities into your portfolio. Uh, the hedger is a, is a really powerful technology that I'll show you uh, hopefully very soon how it works in reality with uh, Lucina's back tester uh, for validation purposes. And uh, I'll show you today the back tester as well. By the way, uh, I just want to mention we are coming up with one more new product uh, will be launched uh, at the beginning of May. We'll send you guys uh, an invitation for the event analyzer. I think that's a, an incredible product uh, and we'll talk more about that. I don't want to you know, uh, break the, uh, the news too early, but this is a game changer. We're very excited about it and I highly recommend following up with the event uh, study or event analyzer, uh, which will be available um, early May as well. Let's uh, move on to um, the, uh, the uh, actual demo. I'm going to crank it up here quickly and show you uh, Quandesk in action. So for those of you who haven't seen Quandesk before, this is a really uh, a browser-based, cloud-based technology. Nothing needs to be installed on the client's machine. It provides, uh, again, the various tools I mentioned before. Just quickly to show you how it works, if I go to the forecaster, I can pick a uh, um, portfolio or an equity list doesn't really matter. I can decide what model to use, what indicators should I use to predict um, the future price based on, and I'm not going to get into too much detail. There are actually webinars that have only touched on the forecaster and you can go back and see them on our website. But if I click on the forecast button here, you can see um, the two weeks predictions for the underlying equities within the uh, portfolio and you can see um, the current price, the forecast price, change in dollars, change in percent and volatility measure or what we call the confidence measure. I can order it by confidence measure. I can find which equities are uh, I like. Uh, again, uh, this is basically not telling our customers uh, how to use the system but primarily um, what measures can, be, can they look at historically and they can decide if they want to invest or not. What I'm doing here is running a quick back test to give you scoring. This is not the full-fledged back tester. It's just giving you a quick analysis that if in the three, the last three months that you see here in the look back, I've ran this forecast every single day looking forward two weeks. How well um, did my results match the forecast criteria? And you can have these scoring um, stars here that gives you measures of scoring. You can see here on the bottom, uh, it gives a 59% um, success rate. And that's, again, just to give you some measure of confidence to use this equity or not. But um, I'm going to show you how I can take that concept and run it through a back tester, and you'll see that in a second. The optimizer, real quick, is again taking a portfolio and be able to basically um, find the optimal, optimal way to allocate your cash among your holdings to maximize the return on your risk profile, risk levels. You have multiple risk levels, minimum risk, balance risk, or maximum return. If I uh, just, uh, for sake of demo, I'm going to run the optimizer. It uses a mean variance optimization. You can see that before and after uh, portfolio, this is the before portfolio, this is the after portfolio. You can show you which equities it found to allocate more on the long and short positions. We support both long only, short only, and long short uh, 
um, portfolio. So you can see the results. Uh, before is the blue line, the orange is the, uh, the after uh, optimization. And you can see uh, if you had invested uh, using that technology based on this historical analysis at this date, April 18th, uh, 2012, you would be here today, and this is actually where you ended up with that using the tool. And these little cones show you what the future looks like uh, moving forward. On the right side, you can see the sharp ratio before and after. There's obviously an improving um, improvement based on our analysis in sharp ratio, um, less volatility, and a much, much nicer look back return. Now, again, this is hindsight. Um, don't take that as a, hey, this is a great thing to do because it requires a lot more analysis and deeper analysis. But this is just to show you, based on historical uh, data, uh, look, we can uh, ascertain uh, performance based on optimization on a given portfolio. Now, again, the back tester will take that very activity and repeat that many, many, many times over the last few years, and it gives you a chance to get, okay, uh, was this just a lucky shot, or was there really a value in our back tester um, over uh, lots, lots of transactions? And quickly, just to uh, um, complete our core offering. This is the Hedger. The Hedger provides basically, again, the ability to take a portfolio and essentially uh, introduce additional equities that when added to the portfolio, they would increase its sharp ratio, reduce volatility, and create a much smoother, essentially uh, lower, lower beta, much smoother um, type of uh, uh, behavior into the future. So again, I can support long only, short only position, or long short. Uh, again, what is my hedge goals? We have three goals, minimum volatility, uh, preserve the return, or blended approach. Uh, what's the look back period? In other words, how far do we want to go back to allow the machine to learn historically uh, before it recommends into the future? Uh, again, some other measures such as beta, uh, how, how, how responsive do you want your hedger to be compared to the core? because we're not allocating 50-50, I have a higher beta on the core, I'm sorry, on the hedge against the core to allow a, a more dramatic uh, shift to compensate for the lack of hedge position when you compare to the core positions. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, minimum uh, position allocation, 1%, 10%. Uh, what is the minimum size of a hedge uh, uh, position and how many equities do I want to include in my hedge? When I run the hedger, It'll take a few seconds to run. Um, you can see the before and after results. Again, uh, this is a, not a great hedge, and not every uh, scenario will be an improvement. But you can see basically the before and after uh, on the sharp ratio, the volatility has been reduced some, and the look back return. This is not a great portfolio, but we show you basically the before and after and the transactions that need to be implemented to move from before hedging to after hedging. So these are the three core products that we are going to test today through our back tester. And I'm just going to show you quickly. Um, the back tester have those three products underneath it. Uh, if I go to, um, let's do the um, um, back testing our forecaster. So what I've done, taking a portfolio, you can see on the left side, it's called Rolling Five. It's got 20 equities. And I said, okay, let's just uh, play around with it a little bit. Let's just say that I want to, um, forecast uh, from this portfolio the top 10 and the bottom 10 equities every two weeks for the last two years. So I want to rebalance this portfolio and pick the top 10 winners and the and I'm going to short the, the bottom 10 losers <laughs> essentially every two weeks for the last two years. I want to compare my results to the S&P 500. What you see here is how I measure the transaction cost which is uh, you know, uh, what's the uh, slippage, which means how much do I want to penalize myself when I buy and sell stocks against the published price because there's no guarantee that I'll be able to execute at that price. And you can actually put multiple measures. You know, we have anywhere from zero bips to 25 bips basis points. Uh, you can go to uh, what is the cost for borrowing stocks that are shorted? Uh, what is the commission per transaction, uh, either per trade or per share, whichever is the max between the two of them. What is the starting cash position? I'm starting with $10 million in my account. And again, how many do I want to select from the top and the bottom? Uh, and when do I want to exit? What you don't see here, by the way, uh, and I'll tell you about the results in a second, is the top 
and bottom selection from the equities that are being forecasted, and uh, when do I exit? And uh, this test that I'm showing you here has uh, two measures for exiting. One is that you have reached your price target. So if you forecast that Apple is going to go from 430 to 450, and in the next two weeks that you're simulating, it got to 450, you exit, or we have this stop loss and limit. Uh, if you had gone up 2% or, or you've gone down, um, so if, you got, if, you, if the market actually had turned bad on you, back on you, and it went in the wrong direction, when you exit and we cap the loss at 2% for that position. So again, this is how uh, we had uh, simulated the entry and exit of the top 10 or the short of the bottom 10 equities. And what you see here is a replication of the forecast settings that we use on a one-time basis, which I was demoing for you before. I'm going to just repeat that again every two weeks for the last two years. And what I'm showing you here, this can take a, a little time, what I'm showing you here is the results of the back test. And uh, it, it is uh, obviously incredible result. This is not sustainable. There's definitely some overfitting here. But you can see this is the strategy as it was running in the last two years. You can see how smooth and how great the line looks. And this is a, indicative of a very strong performing strategy. You can see here in the, in the results on the right side, what is the final value? Started at $10 million, and we have uh, 13.4 million at the end of the trial against the S&P. That was performing very well, but not as well. Uh, change in price, uh, change in percent. What's the sharp ratio? Three is the sharp ratio versus 0 0.53. So Kino ratio, uh, max drawdown, standard deviation of the returns. And what you see here is a summary of the transaction costs, which is about $876,000. So you know, quite a bit of transactions, obviously, as you can see here. Almost 2,000 transactions were performed here. And this is the result that you see um, on the top here. I would run it now uh, for you, but it just takes a long time to execute. It's going back and simulating a lot of transactions, obviously. And it's like the cooking show. You, you basically show the recipe and how you build, but you don't wait for the cake to cook. You show the end result on the, on the morning shows. So this is the same, same concept here. We're showing you uh, what the end result after I ran it um, you know, earlier today. Um, what you see here, by the way, is um, on the bottom, some analysis beyond just the, the graph on the top. So you can see here a risk to uh, volatility. Um, so the return versus the, um, the risk, essentially, uh, correlation here. What you see here is the orange uh, um, strategy is basically showing you that there's a nice return with a fairly low volatility, uh, which is what you want to see in a good strategy compared to the benchmark, which is S&P 500, had a nice return, but uh, but uh, much, much more volatile than uh, what we had seen with our strategy. Uh, what you see on the right side here is industry correlation uh, to some of the industry sectors, as well as uh, beta um, as it uh, compared to some of the industry sectors to show you how, how close you are to some of the sectors out there. Uh, drilling down to the bottom of the screen, you can see here some of the uh, exposure. Exposure is how leverage, uh, how leveraged your, your um, um, uh, as they're being executed, how the transactions, are you going beyond your cash allowance? You obviously do not want to go over um, uh, number one, which is 100%. So you can see that we are not leveraged at all. We go up and down. You see the net leverage, long and short exposures, as well as the um, complete uh, uh, portfolio exposure. It's all uh, looking good. The only time that it was actually exposed 100% is at the end here, which is, uh, which is one. Uh, we also have a full report that we generate as a result of the back tester. This is what the report would look like. It can be saved into a PDF format. It repeats the very same information that I've shown you on the screen. The only additional data that's available here is year-by-year -year comparison. This is a two, two and a half years, um, actually it's a two years exactly, um, um, benchmark uh, testing. But you can see here uh, also the monthly return for the fund and for, for the benchmark, as well as, and this is where the transparency comes into the game here, we show you specifically every single transaction that was performed by our simulation. So you can really go back and compare line by line how it actually, uh, 
how how valid it is and and whether you know these equities were really traded at that price target uh, during these days. So you can see really for every rebalance period uh, by date what the what the holdings were and what transactions you executed to move to the new rebalancing period. Also, you can see here by by rebalance period what is your period return? You lost money here. Obviously, you lost money there as well, and uh, there were some better days. You can see here you made a nice return here, and so on and so forth. So it all adds up, as you can see, not every week you were successful, but in the course of two years, the aggregate had showed a very, very favorable result. So you can see on the top here, as I scroll to the, to the beginning of the, of the chart, uh, the green uh, chart shows a strategy, and the purple shows the benchmark, which is here, the S&P. Uh, 500. So one example of how you backtest the um, the forecaster. Um, what I've done here is I've taken the very same approach and taken uh, a an optimizer backtest. Again, I picked up a portfolio, the biotech uh, portfolio. I have ten million dollars, a little bit more than ten million dollars in that portfolio. Again, every two weeks. But here I picked up a very short time period. I'm going to show you how it actually executes in in the real real world. And uh, this is the S&P 500. Again, the same thing about uh, transaction cost, measuring some of the costs inherent with executing transactions in the real world. Um, the optimizer settings, this is a replica uh, of the optimizer standalone tool. We're just repeating that again every two weeks since the beginning of the year. It's only a three and a half, four months uh, worth of, uh, of, of trading. So I can really execute that now for you to show you what the results look like. So I'm going to push the back test and uh, let it just uh, rip for a few seconds and uh, let's see how it comes back to us. So there are seven rebalancing period. You see it goes through each rebalancing period uh, at a time. Um, at the end of that process it will generate the report and this is what the results look like. Again, the strategy had outperformed the benchmark. Um, still pretty volatile but um, the overall results are very favorable. You see S&P has made uh, about 5%, 5.4%, um, we've made 14%. Again, this is not necessarily, um, it's just for demonstration purposes, but you can see and play around with different criteria, different parameters to see which one is going to work best for you before you execute against it. Uh, and of course, there's many, many other measures that, that are going to be considered uh, in order for you to make uh, you know, a decision whether it's a good strategy or not. And again, I mentioned before, this is not we don't recommend you trade using these tools only. Obviously, not a professional um, investor. Use somebody who knows how to invest. These are great tools to um, really realize the benefit of a strategy using the same tool over and over and over again. Uh, quickly to show you uh, on the bottom here, this is, again, we have asked the uh, optimizer to actually use all the cash we have for the opt optimization. You see the zero uh, cash remaining. You can see that the one is the leverage, which is basically the entire cash is being used every rebalancing period. There's no uh, deviation from that, so that's what we've done. Again, you can see the strategy um, compared to the benchmark, high return, low volatility, um, um, low volatility, and I'm sorry, high volatility and, and, and low return. So again, you want to be here much rather than being, being here than being here. And again, industry correlations. Um, as well as beta. Um, and again, you can actually view a full report by clicking on that button or exporting the transactions to a spreadsheet and doing your own analysis. Again, the transparency uh, permeates the entire tool here. We don't want to provide any assumptions. We want you guys to have the power to make your own decisions. The next um, tool is the uh, Hedger. So Hedger is a really unique tool. We have a, a unique uh, unique uh, actually proprietary uh, uh, information. It's, it's built in-house. It's nothing that anything you've seen anywhere else. We have a patent on that. But uh, the hedger, the way it works, it basically takes a uh, pattern uh, matching approach and what it does, it tries to find historically a price chart and find the anti-correlation chart that represents this, uh, this uh, performance. So we, you can see here, um, this is the result. Uh, this is the core holdings, and uh, what you see here is the um, um, hedge, the hedger, over that time period. So let me kind of walk you through it to show you the result because this is really interesting. 
So I've taken again a portfolio called S&P 100, 25 positions. It's a small portfolio, $386,000. I mean, small for some people, some others, it's big. But um, it is relatively um, uh, a smaller portfolio if you think about professional investors who invest in hedge funds and, and larger, larger um, entities. Um, I'm going to repeat the process every week. Um, again, I'm doing it only for this year because uh, of time constraints. I want to show you how it works. <clears throat> I want to compare the results to the Dow Jones this time. This is my new benchmark to compare it to. Again, the same exact transaction met metrics uh, as far as the cost per trade. And uh, these are the hedge settings. So what is the equity basket that I'd like to pick my equities from? And what is the hedge type? What, is the, what are the hedge goals? The look back period, which is the machine learning period. Uh, target beta. Uh, what's the weight of the of the hedge and um, how much uh, do I want to uh, limit any position to be of certain size. I put zero here to give you a much greater uh, flexibility. Again, uh, normally a hedge fund would not buy one stock or board if they have a $10 million portfolio. So this is not necessarily um, correlated to, to reality, but just to show the exercise, I put zero here to give you more flexibility. And how many equities should I position in every hedge? So um, when I run the back test, and when I run it now, again, bear with me, it's going to go only for, for three, three and a half months, uh, only 14 rebalancing periods. It can go fairly quickly, and I'll show you the results that I've shown you before. At this point, it's creating the report. Take a few more seconds, and here it is. So look at the uh, chart. So what you see here is the orange is our strategy. And the blue is the benchmark. So you can see that we actually had a fairly strong uh, proximity to the benchmark. We actually have outperformed it by $3,000 over the last three months or so. But um, you can see that the hedge actually have done a fairly good job because these were the core holdings. This is our hedge position. And the orange line is the resulting performance of the of the uh, of the fund so again we've taken a um, pretty volatile although very well performing core holdings and we have tapered down its performance in lieu of higher confidence and less volatility by putting the anti-dose or the anti-correlated positions to uh, almost mirror it to provide that extra result it's a safer, theoretically, safer portfolio to invest in based on our analysis here, but it does outperform the benchmark, which is, which is where you want to be. What you see here on the bottom, again, is the uh, risk return um, type of uh, analysis. You can see that the standard deviation, which is how, di how, how varied the result set or the, the uh, price, uh, prices, uh, the daily, daily prices were, you can see that the um, um, the hedge actually had a very um, um, a low return and a somewhat a higher um, volatility uh, on the daily standard deviation. You can see that the green actually, which is the core, um, it has the highest return but also the most volatile one and the results of the combined uh, positions together provide a very nice smooth and predictable return. Uh, compared to the Dow Jones, which has also performed very well, as you know, in the last three and a half months. So again, these are just the tools that are available. Again, that's available in the format of report, in a PDF format. Uh, we can uh, customize uh, the logo to provide additional branding for some of our customers and so on and so forth. But that's kind of uh, uh, the notion of uh, how you can validate by transaction, by day, what you bought, what you sold, what the commission cost was, what the slippage cost was, and so on and so forth. So that's a demo that I wanted to uh, quickly run through. And it is a lot of, obviously, uh, things that you have not uh, seen here today, a lot of questions I'm sure that, that you may have. But I just wanted to give you a high level what the back tester that was sent up, uh, Quantes, provides. Um, let me quickly go back to um, um, my presentation here and uh, conclude the, the meeting. So we've gone through the demo. Uh, I've shown you uh, some of those uh, results in real life. Uh, if you want to try out 
any of our products. Uh, they are available 30 days uh, free of charge for first-time users. Um, the, again, the, uh, the back test will be only available April 30th, which is another week or so um, before we go live. But uh, once we go live, it will be available for testing for 30 days before, um, before you sign up. Uh, you can go to our website, and there will be a button on the top right to uh, register for the free trial. Um, also, uh, we are on Bloomberg. Um, the back tester is not yet available on Bloomberg. We have three of our products uh, on Bloomberg uh, Terminal. If you uh, press Apps Q4 and then Go, that's the forecaster. Apps uh, Q Opti and Go is the optimizer. And Apps QH Go is the hedger. The hedger is not yet live on Bloomberg. It's pending uh, maybe a, do a day or so of getting Bloomberg to certify and approve that it's good to go, and our hedger will be available on Bloomberg. What I've shown you here on the screen in the demo is identically available on Bloomberg, plus a few extra features such as importing portfolios and, and uh, be able to uh, correlate or, or jump from uh, an equity to a Bloomberg screen that shows you more data about that equity uh, from within our, our application. But it's identically available, and it even looks the same on the Bloomberg terminal. Okay, questions and answers. So uh, John was nice enough to give me uh, some of the questions, um, um, and I'm going to try and answer them the best I can. The first one was asked by uh, one of you, uh, what were your results from 2007, 2009 when market was in a free fall? So again, uh, uh, man, that's a, that's a good question. Um, that's where you can actually go into the back tester and run a very similar uh, exercise as I've done before, and uh, I'm sure it was not as rosy as it is showing here, but remember, we are it's a market neutral um, type of strategy, so it's easy to take uh, the state here and go to 2007 and uh, run the test uh, like that. I'm going to actually execute it while I'm answering other questions because I want you guys to see it in action, and, uh, and let's see what comes back. That will be an interesting exercise. So let's take a look at that. This is unrehearsed and we can try it out and see what happens. And uh, let me run it. And while it's running, I'm going to um, answer the other questions. Um, can I upload my own data or will I only be able to backtest what's in your system? That's a great question. And uh, so so we, we are, um, so we have two types of three types of data that we support. The first one is the data that's price line data and, and normal what you would expect uh, from fundamental data input that you would have in a, in a system. Um, so uh, that's available out of the box. We also have partnered with some proprietary data providers. We have a, a press release pending. I'm not going to uh, uh, you know, uh, break it uh, in here, but we are making a um, very strong alliance with some proprietary data providers that are that are great addition, quality data, predictive data to our existing system. And again, what we provide is the ability to analyze which data point inputs are more predictive than others. Uh, one more question. How many years of data can I test? Uh, we go back as uh, far as 1985 with our data. However, just, just uh, remember that in the last few years, the whole dynamics of the market has changed dramatically, you know, with the whole notion of uh, High frequency trading, algo based tra trading, uh, day traders and 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 uh, swing traders. I mean, this is a, a different market, different animal uh, than it was at, you know more than ten years ago. And I highly caution making uh, assumptions from one into the other. Last last question that I uh, I'm going to have time for is: uh, Can I test my own trading strategies that I developed in the Trade Station? And the answer is probably not. Again, we did not uh, necessarily give you guys um, a uh, strategy that uh, uh, can be any strategy can be can be translated. We really are testing only our machine learning tool set here, as opposed to any strategy. And um, and um, this is uh, this is exactly um, what we intend to do here. We are not trying to make the system be a backtest for any strategy. It's only using our our technologies. Um, here's the result. Let's look at the, look at the result on the screen here. So we can see the strategy actually had outperformed even those during these two years. 
um, we can see that uh, we actually have a small gain, but it's very smooth and nice, nice, uh, <laughs> nice strategy. And uh, while well, the market tanked uh, big time, so uh, again, um, I'm not saying this is a, always going to be a great strategy, but this is one of the ways you can validate um, one uh, one way of doing things over, over the other. Just to make sure, in all transparency here, what we've done here in this strategy, we've taken an approach of taking a portfolio, identifying uh, top 10 and bottom 10 is just 20 portfolios. We are reusing the same equities over and over again, and in essence. Uh, Providing you with um, with uh, additional um, you know exit criteria. If it goes down against you more than two percent, you just get out. And if you reach the price target, you get out as well. Or if the price stayed the same or did not change a whole lot, and the two weeks uh, had elapsed, you rebalance it anyway. So that's kind of how we identified this strategy. It actually, it looks pretty darn good here, even during those crazy years of 07 to 09. Um, one uh, last question before I uh, conclude the uh, webinar. Uh, how exactly are you avoiding overfitting of the back test optimization and how much of the resulting equity curve is out of the sample? Um, you know, the overfitting exercise um, um, is, uh, is um, something you have to do yourself. The way I would probably uh, do overfitting is uh, change some of the criteria um, for exit and entry for selection, you know, uh, and see how it how it works. Change the the the, the forecast, uh, uh, you know, criteria to go back uh, six months versus three months, or do a uh, one week versus a two weeks uh, forecast and see how it how it shapes up, as well as um, as well as um, looking at the forecast settings, you know, change out some of the parameters that are being used in the model that is currently uh, all the indicators that are being used for the forecaster. This is, uh, if you have looked at the previous webinars, how the forecaster work, we use uh, technical and fundamental indicators that are in combination to create a model that our system, our machine learning, goes back and historically try to find uh, matches to. So uh, these are the things you can play around with. And if you see that you have uh, results that are consistent, uh, that can be uh, interesting. You can change the date range as well and see, again, for the same period, starting from a month later or a month earlier, and see if the results are are the same, and that will be uh, that will be um, um, how to avoid overfitting. As far as out of sample, um, um, you know what we're showing you here is exactly the sample data that we are executing. Yes, if I if I get the question, um, you know there, there's no additional you know transactions behind the scene that are not being presented here. This is exactly what I'm presenting here on the screen. And these are the results as a correspond for these equities being executed uh, based on the uh, price targets that uh, the machine um, is recommending for forecasting. And we actually entering and exiting at the beginning, opening uh, price of the day, uh, including the slippage. And we are exiting at the end, closing that price of the day, unless it was exited because price target was, again, hit or we have gone 2% against us in our strategy. And all these things, by the way, are configurable. You can change those um, um, yourself in the system. OK. Um, I tried to fit it into a 40 minutes uh, presentation. I think I've done a fairly decent job um, sticking with that. Um, and I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email us or call us. Uh, we're here uh, available to help. And don't forget, we are going to have an exciting webinar coming up with our event analyzer. Highly, highly recommend attending that. That's, in my opinion, a fantastic product that can really, uh, can really help out if you are um, in the space of uh, investment uh, in financial markets. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, enjoy your Friday.